Kristen Soldis Anderson is a sought after pollster, speaker, commentator, and author. She's the author of The Selfie Vote, where millennials are leading America and how Republicans can keep up. Kristen is the co-founder of Echelon Insight, an opinion research and analytics firm that serves brands, trade associations, nonprofits, and political clients. She's a Fox News contributor and has appeared on Morning Joe, The Lead with Jake Tapper, and Real Time with Bill Maher on HBO. She also hosts a weekly podcast on Sirius XM, The Trend Line with Kristen Soldis Anderson, and co-hosts a bi-weekly podcast called The Pollsters. Let's get some of Kristen's thoughts on the current state of the Republican Party. The current makeup of the Republican Party is that the GOP has really done well in recent elections with voters who are older, voters who are in rural areas, voters who are particularly religious, um, and white working class voters. That's a big change to the party's makeup that's been happening in kind of slow motion over the last uh, number of years, but that the rise of Donald Trump really accelerated. Um, white working class kind of union voters used to be a big piece of the Democrats coalition, particularly in the Midwest. Um, but that's there's a reason why a state like Ohio, that was a quintessential swing state when I first started out working in politics, um, has now become a, a pretty solidly red state, where if you look at things like the primary for the Senate there, um, it's a fight to see who can be the most like Donald Trump in that primary. Um, so the Republican Party's coalition has grown to be um, really rooted in a number of communities that, unfortunately for the GOP, are sort of shrinking as a proportion of the population. Um, the census data that came out this year showed that rural areas are beginning to shrink as more and more people move to the suburbs. Now, that could be bad news for Republicans because typically um, they had won the, the suburbs but have lost it in recent years. On the other hand, if these voters are moving back to the suburbs and we know that the upcoming midterms are going to have a lot of congressional districts that rely on winning those suburbs, you know, do those voters still hang on to some sort of fiscally conservative, uh, maybe a little bit culturally conservative views and, and make those suburbs still up for grabs is an open question. Um, but the party is certainly sort of skewed a little more working class rather than that stereotype of the GOP being the party of the rich that you had maybe 15 or 20 years ago. Republicans these days are particularly concerned about issues like immigration, concerned about a feeling that there is cancel culture out there, that, that the media is biased against them. And some of these things are not new. Republicans have been anxious about the issue of immigration for a long time. Um, Republicans have never gone wrong in a primary sort of going after the media. Um, a lot of this isn't necessarily new. What I do think is new at the moment is that for Republicans, there's a real sense of feeling under siege, feeling like the survival of the country as we know it is at stake. Um, and you don't just see this on the Republican side, Democrats do feel this way as well. Um, in the lead up to the 2020 election from both parties, enormous majorities of Republicans said they thought that if Joe Biden won the election, um, that it would do lasting damage to the country and vice versa. But when I ask Republicans, what are they most concerned about? Issues like, illegal immigration, things like worrying about defunding the police, lack of support for the police, um, liberal media bias, as well as high taxes, which is a bit more of a sort of conventional Republican economic concern, rise to the very top of that list. When we also ask Republican voters what priorities they're looking for in a candidate for office, we uh, did a survey where we asked people to sort of rank a number of different qualities to say, this is absolutely necessary for me to vote for someone, or I could never vote for someone who had this quality. Or in the middle, you could just say it doesn't really matter. Interestingly, someone who has a personality like Donald Trump was pretty far down that list. Um, it's not a top concern. But someone who fights the Democrats, who takes that sort of Donald Trump combative approach, is the sort of number one thing um, that Republican voters say they're looking for. It's a mix of that combative approach with an agenda that is centered around the same kind of issues that Donald Trump considered his America first agenda, things like trade, immigration, et cetera. So it's a mix of a, a kind of more Trumpian policy direction with, if not Trump's personality, that sort of desire to be involved in political combat nonstop. Um, that's really what sort of Republican voters are looking for uh, when they're trying to decide who they want to have as leaders within their own party. 
Republicans are in an interesting place right now because the party has evolved quite a bit from the type of party that it was when George W. Bush was president. Um, a recent survey I did, we actually asked people if they could be a part of any one of five different parties. So getting rid of the two party system for a moment and giving people five options, um, two of which were right of center. One was more a traditional right of center, um, free market, sort of mild, socially conservative, pro you know family values. Um, strong national defense type party. And then we had one that was a little more of the sort of populist, taking power back from the elites, being sort of strong on border security and tough on immigration, uh, a little bit more of kind of a Trumpian agenda on things like trade or immigration. And we found the Republican Party somewhat split on that issue with a slight lean toward that more sort of populist, further to the right kind of party. Um, and that's a big evolution from where things stood during the Bush era. Now, what's interesting is in some ways, younger Republicans are trying to lead the party on a different path on issues like race, climate change, and LGBT issues. Um, younger Republicans, much more likely than older Republicans, to say that they know someone who uses uh, gender neutral pronouns. Um, they're much more likely than older Republicans to say that they believe, um, not in these exact words, but basically that systemic racism is real and is a challenge that we're facing in this country. And they're much more likely to prioritize an issue like climate change. Um, so the question is, with younger Republicans being a somewhat small piece of the party, but nevertheless having views on these issues that could move the party, how fast will that evolution take place? But the counter argument to this idea that younger voters will dramatically change the GOP is that when you take that five party question again and you ask younger voters, which one would you prefer? Um, most young people in general lean more to sort of left of center parties, but of those who choose a right of center party, by a sizable margin, they prefer that more populist approach than actually that conservative, that sort of traditional center right type vision. You're not just seeing this in the US, you're seeing this in parties across Europe over the last couple of years, center right parties really trying to figure out what their identity is and find ways to attract younger voters who are otherwise being pulled to parties like the Green Party or perhaps a more libertarian type party, or as is the case, at least in this study we did in the US, to a party that's a bit more sort of tough on immigration, um, populist in approach versus something that looks like center-right conservatism. So it'll be interesting to see if younger Republicans can sort of pressure their elders into taking different positions on things like race and climate change while at the same time still being a group that tends to embrace that more populist vision for the future of the party. The other growing demographic group that Republicans have really tried to make inroads with in, in the last couple of years, to a lot of people's surprise, is sort of working class voters of color. And whether that's because these are folks that disliked some of the COVID lockdown policies, whether they're worried about the economy, um, or that they just liked something about Donald Trump's style, uh, we've been finding in a lot of research that there has been this slight shift among voters uh, from communities of color who are working class being slightly more interested in a GOP message. And that could also be linked to things like views on public safety, views on immigration, which I, I know is counterintuitive, but it's unmistakable if you look at a map from the 2020 election and you look at which types of precincts swung the heaviest toward the GOP, it's oftentimes precincts with a high proportion of Latino voters in working class communities, looking at the Rio Grande Valley along the border in Texas. We're seeing now as uh, legislators in Texas try to figure out what the congressional districts will look like for future cycles, um, Republicans now feeling much better about their prospects of being able to pick up voters in that Rio Grande Valley than perhaps they would have been um, you know, a couple of years ago. In my home state of Florida, it wasn't just Miami-Dade County and the large Cuban population swinging to the right, but also counties like Osceola County, right outside of Disney World, where I grew up. Very sort of working class, particularly Latino majority county, um, didn't outright vote for Trump by a huge margin, but certainly moved further to the right relative to where they were four years ago. So the good news for Republicans is that even as America becomes more and more diverse, a lot of this talk that sort of demographics are destiny and therefore this will mean Republicans are out of luck moving forward, there's a caveat to that, which is that for Republicans having this kind of more working class appeal, it doesn't seem just confined to white working class voters. It does seem like it's had some spillover effects. 
And so as America does grow more and more diverse as a country, that does not mean that Republicans are guaranteed to lose over the long term, particularly since it seems like they've got the beginnings of ingredients to begin assembling a more diverse working class coalition.